Well, hello, all of my students. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Welcome to another episode of Improved English Podcast. And my name is Jay. And on this podcast, just like my lessons on YouTube, I have the opportunity to help you to improve your English comprehension, vocabulary, and your fluency. Now, one difference between the podcast and my lessons on YouTube is I try to take my time. These uh, episodes of the podcast are a little bit longer and I talk a little bit more about various topics. So I hope you enjoy today's episode. I can't remember if this is episode seven or eight, but you should see it on the title of the thumbnail. So we're going to have some fun on today. At least I am. And I have a few things lined up for today on the show. Uh, I hope you really enjoy and have a good time with me. Now, let me say, if this is your first time, down in the description of today's episode, you will find my playlist that you can listen to and study while you're working out, cleaning the house, on an airplane, parachuting, canoeing, <laughs> whatever you may be doing, you can use my playlist to help you to improve your English. Uh, also, let me say on today's episode and probably from here on out, I am going to be teaching from PDFs that I give to my students for free. OK, so I'm going to try something different today. If you want the study sheet that I'm using, be sure to follow the link in the description. So as I always say, I hope you're ready for a little bit of learning and laughter by the way, what do you guys think about my new setup? Okay, I set this up, got some lights. Um, I'm in another room and I have a little bit more space. <laughs> so I think I'll try to record the podcast episodes from here. So I would love to hear from you guys down in the comments section. Uh, how does the new setup look? Okay, so. On today's episode, let's start out with a random topic, okay? A random topic. So I found on Google, they have sites that will feed you random topics of discussion. <laughs> so I think this is a great way to communicate, uh, offer some opinions, uh, maybe a little controversy, hear your comments. And so we're going to try this random conversation topic randomizer. <laughs> and let's see what topic it gives. And for the first part of today's podcast, I will discuss and talk about this topic. Now, let me say, if I don't like the topic... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it's going to recommend. It's random. So if I don't like the topic, I am going to uh, choose another one. So let's see how this goes down. I'm, I'm almost a little afraid. <laughs> let's see what this does here. Are you guys ready? Let me make this a little bit larger so you can see it. OK, let's let's click start. And let's see what random topic we get. Weddings. OK, I can talk about that. <laughs> weddings. OK, weddings. So in this country, wedding season is usually during the winter time. No, I'm sorry, during the summer months. So usually from spring about April to about August. That's usually wedding season here in this country. Uh, weddings are usually done in this country in a church. 
some people have their weddings outside in a park on a beach there are some people that actually travel to other countries like the Bahamas, Jam uh, Jamaica, different places in the Caribbean, and they get married there. Some people go to the courthouse and they get a judge to marry them. Some people go to Las Vegas <laughs> and they get married at a chapel in Las Vegas, okay? Uh, some people don't get married. Some people live together, and they never get married. They stay together for years, decades, and they never formally get married. Uh, often, a wedding, people dress up with designated colors, uh, usually the bride wears white uh, and the groomsmen, they may wear black with a different color or white with a different color. Um, weddings. Wow. I got married this year, whether you believe it or not, this year will be 28 years for me. <laughs> I have been married for 28 years and uh, I got married young. My wife and I uh, got married uh, when I was in my early 20s. And so, thankfully, uh, God has helped us to stay faithful and have a productive marriage. Uh, I can remember her parents, at least her father, did not come to our wedding. He did not want her to marry me. And so he didn't even come to the wedding. Yeah, that's a true story. Um, my grandmother came to my wedding. One of my grandmothers had already passed, but my granny, she came to the wedding and she tried to take over. <laughs> She's so sassy. You know, she tried to just take over everything. She loves her grandson or she's passed now. She loved her grandson and... Um, that was memorable, uh, but our wedding was very, very fun. We had a great time. Uh, we went, we drove to um, Charleston, South Carolina for our honeymoon, and uh, we had a great time, uh, but weddings, wow. Are you married? Did you have a big wedding? Some people have small weddings. Um one thing about weddings here in this country they have, and I'm pretty sure it's everywhere, they have receptions where you have to spend a lot of money to feed the people who come to your wedding. <laughs> if I could do it all over again, I would probably suggest having a smaller wedding and putting that money aside maybe into savings or for a home because it's a lot of money depending on what you want to do for your wedding. I knew a young girl who saved her money as a young adult specifically for her wedding. And when she got married, she saved $26,000 all to go towards her marriage, her wedding. Wow, that's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> in my mind for a wedding. Now, I know you have people that may spend way more than that. But let me know, uh, did you have a big wedding, a small wedding? Did you not have a wedding? I had, me and my wife have some friends whose parents, they got married young and they never had a wedding. And so I think they have been married probably 40 something years. They're both in their late 60s, maybe 70s. And I believe it was last year. Their kids who are friends of ours, of course, they're adults. They gave their parents their first wedding when they were in their 60s or 70s. 
Yeah, they didn't have one. And so they dressed up. She had the wedding gown on. He had the tuxedo. They were looking all young and nice. And everyone at the reception or the party was dressed up. It was very, very honorable and nice. And uh, some people don't have a wedding for whatever reason. And they may get married at a later time or they may never have that experience. It's just like some people never went to prom when they were in high school. So weddings are a big, big deal here in this country. Let me know how weddings are done in your country. Are there still countries where marriages and weddings are prearranged, where the parents select who their child is going to marry? Oh, wow. Let me know, does that still take place in in your country? So I'm going to probably do that. I think that is so fun to pick a random topic <laughs> and and then talk about it. Let, let me just see what it was. it's going to pick next. Famous people. Oh, OK. Famous people. I could talk about famous people. I've met some famous people. I've met Chris Tucker before. Uh, back when I was younger, I used to do photography and I got into celebrity photography. And so I met Chris Tucker. I have met Tupac Shakur. Uh, I have met um, a number of different artists over the years, celebrity artists. I bumped into Al Sharpton, who is a political figure here in this country. I met him at a, um, there was a conference going on that I was attending and he was at a separate event and I saw him and he did not look like what he looks like on television. Have you ever bumped into a celebrity and you thought they were going to be one way, but they were some way, another way? Um, he was short. <laughs> I've met or I've seen and been in the company of uh, Don Cheadle. I saw him. He's an actor. Uh, he was on a flight that I was on and he was not very friendly. Probably didn't want to talk to anyone, but I I was in his company. Um, so, yeah, famous people. I've seen a, a few famous people in my lifetime. So that's pretty fun. This thing has got me curious. I'm just going to do another one just to see the topic that comes up. Shopping. Oh, goodness. <laughs> now, I didn't really have a lot of money when I was younger. My parents didn't spend a lot of money on shopping. They spent their money on traveling and making sure we had experiences. And so when I became an adult, I believe I did a lot of shopping because I didn't experience that when I was younger. Uh, but now that I'm older, I do less shopping. Uh, I still shop, but not as much as I used to. Um, one thing that I do like to spoil myself with, I like to go to a nice restaurant and I like a nice pair of shoes. <laughs> so when I do shop, uh, I do look for a nice pair of shoes. So I'm going to leave the randomizer alone because I could do that all day. That's pretty fun. OK, so let's get ready to dive into today's episode. Let me minimize this and let's get into today's episode. OK, now what I'm going to do is I have a story that we're going to read and go through. But before we do, let's go over some definitions. So this is going to be the story. I, I'm calling it Anna's Business. OK, and before we read the story, let's go through some of the definitions. Now, if you want to have this study guide, Make sure you go down into the description and follow the link and it's completely free. Uh, you'll join my list and I'll get this to you. OK, now 
Let's see. By the time I send this out, you may or may not get it. But anyway, join the list and I'll make sure you, you get it. OK, so join the list and let's go through this. OK, so the first definition is persevered. Persevered. OK, which means to continue in a course of action, even in the face of difficulties with little or no indication of success, persevere. So this was one word that my student that I tutor when I do one on one English lessons, <laughs> we had such a good laugh about this particular word, persevere. OK, the su part, persevere, persevere was hard for him to pronounce. And we had a great laugh. So in life, you're going to have to persevere. There are going to be difficult times in a marriage, difficult times in a family, uh, difficult times possibly with your health. Uh, just life is full of adversity, but it's important for us to persevere or to have courage when we're facing obstacles or hardships. Okay. Daunting, daunting, intimidating or discouraging through sheer size, complexity or difficulties. Something that is daunting is imitating or discouraging because of its size, complexity, or difficulty. So you could actually say learning English is a daunting task. <laughs> it's difficult. It, it can be rewarding, but at times it's, it's, it's challenging. It's daunting. OK, or you might say I had a daunting experience. OK, when I went to this restaurant, there was a roach in my salad. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> a roach in my salad. No. OK, the next word operations. Operations, the activities and tasks involved in running a business or other organization operation okay operation now you can talk about operation in another way if a person is having surgery you might say she had a operation last tuesday okay but operation here can talk about the way a business runs in order for my business to run successfully, you might say. We have three primary operations. That we must do every day, OK, operations, OK, another word that I want you to learn and become familiar with is competitive. Having a strong desire to be more successful than others competitive okay now i believe your biggest competition should be yourself not anyone else don't compete with other people i believe and what i try to do is compete with myself i try to be better today than i was yesterday okay uh, sometimes when you start competing with other people you open the door for jealousy and envy because some people may be better than you or some people may have more than you. And so I don't see the need to compete with other people because, you know, I may be better or you may be better. And so it's no need to compete. Now, when there's a sport involved, then competition is good. So the two teams were very competitive at the game, you might say. OK. Let's look at a few more definitions. Let's see. Number five, innovative, 
Introducing a new idea, creative in thinking, innovative. So you might say the iPhone is a very innovative piece of technology, okay? Or the motorized car was a new innovation to the market, Okay, or some people say AI is a bad innovation. How do you feel about AI? Do you use AI? I think like anything, it can be used for good or bad. Okay, the internet can be used for good or bad. Okay, people can be good or bad. And so AI, this new Innovation, I think it can be used for good. Uh, but of course, you're going to have some people that misuse it. What do you think about AI? <laughs> Oftentimes, when I think about AI technology, I think about the movie with Will Smith. <laughs> what was the name of that? AI, I think that was the name of the movie. I can't remember, but. Uh, where they had all the robots taking over. Oh, my goodness. I hope it doesn't come to that. Or the movie Terminator with Arnold Schwarzenegger. You remember that movie? Okay, loyal. No, 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 number six, recognition. Recognition. Acknowledgement of someone's existence or legality or validity. OK, recognition. It's good for a parent to give recognition to their child when they do well. OK, so you might say the supervisor refused to give me recognition for my hard work. Recognition. OK, loyal. Another vocabulary word. Loyal. Giving or showing firm and constant support or allegiance to a person or institution. Loyal. Yeah, I believe loyalty is a great attribute or characteristic to have. It's important to be loyal. I must be loyal to my wife. My wife must be loyal to me. Okay. I must be loyal to myself or to my beliefs. Okay. Some people call it a code. OK, loyal. I'm loyal at saving money, you might say. Or you could observe someone who keeps their car clean all the time and you can say. They are loyal to being a good steward of their car. OK, some people like dogs because they're loyal. OK. And you know how I feel about cats. <laughs> Are you a cat person or a dog person? Cats, to me, for some reason, are just not loyal. They come here and they just won't come here. But a dog, come here and a dog will come here. So I don't know. I, I've never tried to train a cat, but I work with cats here in the neighborhood that come by. I feed them and they are not loyal. <laughs> okay, we're almost done. Demand. Demand. The desire of consumers on for a particular service or commodity demand. OK, so the desire for something. There's a high demand for electric cars. There's a high demand for Apple iPhones. OK, but you could use demand as a command, you know. I demand you to bring that to me. OK, so when you're telling someone something, demand. Number nine, quality, quality, the standard of something as measured against other things of a similar kind. OK, the degree or excellence of something. So you may say this shirt is low quality. OK. But you may say the shirt that Sheila has on is high quality. By the way, this is Sheila. Say, say hello to Sheila. 
I've had this mannequin for years, and I thought it would make a great backdrop. So here we have Sheila in the background. I hope you enjoy her company. Okay. She does not have a head. <laughs> But she has a hat on her head, okay? Or a hat on her neck because she doesn't have a head. And finally, determined. Having made a firm decision and being resolved not to change. Determined. Okay, so you might say, I am determined to learn English. Or I am determined to watch today's podcast until the end. And sometimes, you know, when I watch podcasts, I may chop them up or I may watch 15 minutes now, then 15 minutes later. Uh, but you have to be determined to finish what you start. Now, in this PDF that you will get, I also have some fill in the blank questions and an answer key. So this can keep you busy for at least a few days and help you with your study. OK, so let's go through this story and read as I try to make it a little bit larger for you. Matter of fact, let's just go and do it like this. All right. Maybe you can see that a little bit better. All right. Anna had always dreamed of owning her own bakery. Let's read and repeat that. Anna had always dreamed of owning her own bakery. Have you ever dreamed about something, a goal, something you wanted to do or accomplish? It could be I dream to be more fluent at English. It could be I dream to go to Paris. That's one of my wife's dreams. She desires to go to Paris. Do any of you live in Paris, France? Could we come visit you? <laughs> Would you meet us for tea? Do they drink tea in Paris? Usually I see them only drinking like coffee or cocoa. I'm not sure. Let me know. Do they drink tea in, in France? She poured her heart and soul into creating delicious recipes and unique pastries. Let's read and repeat. She poured her heart and soul into creating delicious recipes and unique pastries okay so when you pour your heart into something you you give it all you have okay i'm i'm pouring my heart out into this job or you might say i'm pouring my heart out into this relationship i'm pouring my heart out however However, the reality of starting a business hit her hard. So in other words, we would say she bit off more than she could chew. She thought it would be easy, but it was actually challenging or difficult. Securing funding for the bakery proved to be a daunting task, but Anna persevered. Okay, so securing funding. To secure funding means she was looking to borrow money to help her start her business. Securing funding. Okay. Once the bakery was up and running, Anna faced the challenge of managing the day-to-day -day operations. 
Once the bakery was up and running, Anna faced the challenge of managing the day-to-day operations. So day-to-day operations have to do with things that you do daily, day-to-day, okay? Day-to-day operations. Despite the long hours and hard work, Anna found joy in seeing her customers enjoy her creations. Oh, yes. So Anna was to the point to where she was happy about seeing people enjoy what she did. And that's how work should be. You should enjoy your work. One phrase that we have here in America is we we say that if it's easy, you'll whistle while you work. So you know, it's simple to you. You you enjoy it. And so she found joy in people liking her her creation. However, the competitive nature of the industry brought its own set of challenges. So competitive, there was a lot of people doing the same thing. They were trying to get the same customers. It's it's like YouTube. It's very competitive. <laughs> there are hundreds, if not thousands of people teaching English, you know, but I find joy in knowing that I'm helping somebody. Somebody likes my style. Somebody enjoys the way I do what I do. Okay, so to me, I get my eyes off of what people are doing and I try to be the best me that I can be. And so that's my approach. Okay, Anna had constantly or Anna had to constantly innovate and adapt to stay ahead. Building a loyal customer base was tough, but Anna's dedication and passion for baking shone through. That's good. Yes, building a loyal customer base. So here on YouTube, when you follow me, when you communicate, I'm doing the same thing that Anna is doing. I'm building a community, a a, 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 a group of people that enjoy communicating and learning English. And man, let me tell you something. It is tough. <laughs> it is rough. But I enjoy helping others. I enjoy uh, putting these lessons together. I enjoy videography. I enjoy it. So whether I help 10 people or a thousand people. It's all good. It's all good. Okay, we're winding up the story. Slowly, the bakery gained recognition or people began to recognize what Anna was doing. They said, hey, she's got some good food. And Anna's hard work began to pay off. As the business grew, Anna faced the pressure of maintaining quality while meeting demand. Oh, I know what that feels like. So you start helping people and people start wanting you to do this and do that. (laughs) Jake, can we have some more free stuff? You know, people have a demand on what you're producing. Okay. So yes, that's, that's a part of business. Finally, through it all, Anna remained determined, driven by her love for baking and the dream of a successful bakery. Awesome. Now, let's read through this story at a faster pace without stopping. Anna had always dreamed of owning her own business. 
She poured her heart and soul into creating delicious recipes and unique pastries. However, the reality of starting a business hit her hard. Securing funding for the bakery proved to be a daunting task, but Anna persevered. Once the bakery was up and running, Anna faced the challenge of managing the day-to-day -day operations. Despite the long hours and hard work, Hannah found joy in seeing her customers enjoy her creations. However, the competitive nature of the industry brought its own set of challenges. Hannah had to constantly innovate and adapt to stay ahead. Building a loyal customer base was tough, but Anna's dedication and passion for baking, baking shone through. Slowly, the bakery gained recognition and Anna's hard work began to pay off. As the business grew, Anna faced the pressure of maintaining quality while meeting demand. Through it all, Anna remained determined, driven by her love for baking and the dream of a successful bakery. <laughs> so that's today's story. Now, remember, you can get this lesson by signing up for the email down in the link. And I not only send out the lessons I do here on the podcast, but also at least once a week, uh, I send out other assignments that you can complete and you can study. Okay. Now, before we wrap up today's episode, let's go and read some comments from our subscribers. I'm trying to get this together. I got a lot before me. I got a lot going on. <laughs> okay, I got it. All righty then. Let's go over here and try to set this up. Bear with me for one second. One second. I seem to have had some problems. Let's see if this will fix it. Okay, here we go. Okay, here is a comment from Rattlesaw, and he says, I think, oh, hi, Jay. I think it is a very good idea with that kind of lesson. In my me time during the weekend, I love watching YouTube with the English lessons, and I also like to work in my yard. Have a good weekend. So I asked on my episode of Today with Jay, I asked, uh, would you guys like me to do Today with Jay episodes separate? Okay. I wanted to know, is that something that I should do? to have conversations with you uh, more frequently throughout the week. And uh, he replied and said, yes, I would love that. OK, let's see here. Let's look for some more. Uh, these are answers to different questions. I'm looking for some comments. Let's go through here. All right. OK, here we go. Here's some more. Hi, Teacher J. I love so much today's lesson and I like hearing you teach and I love your lessons. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Lucette. OK, another comment. It's always good to hear from you. It's good to be heard, sir. <laughs> or ma'am. OK. Uh, let's read this one. Hi, Teacher J. I really appreciate today's episode. I think it's a good idea to talk together in informal in an informal way. Could be interesting during these lessons to choose a topic exchanging our opinions. I believe it'll be stimulating uh, everything allows us to learn listening, reading and writing. They're good ways to improve 
English language. Oh, awesome. I agree. So based on these two comments, I should probably keep doing uh, those type of videos like today with Jay. And so I'm going to see what I can put together that would be uh, something that I can handle. Maybe I'll do another channel and even if it's just a few of us talking back and forth and you will benefit from that, uh, I think it's well worth doing. So let me know down in the comments section your thoughts on that. I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Uh, we've got a lot done today and be sure to download the PDF. You can study it from your phone or you can print it out and complete it there. Well, until next week, I hope you join me on another episode of Improved English. I hope you join me. Have a great day and the rest of your week. I hope to see you then.